Sabbath peace. Sabbath peace. It's another opportunity for us to hear and learn of the word of truth as given to us by the Most High God. All honor goes to the Father through the Son, whose name is Yahushua. In him lies the only hope for salvation. We know that it is obtained by grace through faith, not of works, lest anyone should boast. And given freely as a gift to all who obey him. Y'all remember when he paid attention. You know what I'm talking about? If you do not obey him, it is made what? Manifest that you do not. What is it? Manifest or made obvious. There you go. That you do not believe. And what we say next? In him, huh? <laughs> In Nevada. Uh -uh. <laughs> In, him lies. In this state. In this state, you should expect. No, no, good, no good things. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> no good things are possible. Good, I can't buy good help about here. No good things. What? In this, state, in, in this state, you should expect no good thing from the Most High. However, anything that you do get, whether it be a gift of tongues, a gift of prophecy, and a gift of. Or any supernatural Or any supernatural experience that you may have. It can or it will be used against you in the day of judgment. With that said, peace to the saints that are in the room, to the saints that couldn't make it, but no peace to the wicked. The only thing we say to them is repent that they might live. What did we talk about last week, Zahar? You on your own, boy. We talked about some stuff, too. What did he do, And no. Let me see. Go ahead. My bad. I ain't gonna interrupt you no more. What you got? David told who? What David told him? Uh, yeah. David always telling somebody no, something. Huh? What did he tell his son to do? Why are you always two weeks behind? I, don't <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember what I did. Why can't you remember? <laughs> <laughs> that makes a whole lot of sense. Yeah. What we talked about last week? TJ. Uh, let's see. Solomon getting ready to build a temple. Mm. All of the workers that he employed. Y'all remember that? Y'all remember Solomon getting it together? I to talk to my man Hiram down there in Lebanon. That boy, so look, that boy Solomon was getting it together. He had the whole area bowing down to him. He had charging people taxes, levying taxes against folks. Right? This is the first king that we had that was running it in a time of peace. Like, David had it and David was at war with everybody. But because of that, because David went to war with everybody, now everybody a little, you know what I'm saying? Like, no, nah, don't mess with them Hebrews. You know what I'm saying? Them boy Hebrews, no, nah, them black boys down the street, don't mess with them. Leave them alone. Right? So then Solomon got to step into it and all these people has already been conquered. So Solomon, remember, he had something special about him. What did he pray for? Y'all remember his prayer? You don't remember his prayer? No. Mel, you was here for his prayer. I was? Mm-hmm. What did Solomon ask God for? <laughs> TJ was here, too. He was here, too. All y'all was here for that. Y'all were here for the darn prayer. I asked y'all, and I said, what would y'all ask God for? Oh. Oh. what you say? One of y'all said riches. Who was it? No, they weren't here. Was just no, that ain't true. They was here. Oh, wait. For sure, Mel was here. The Mel was the only one that gave the right answer. Oh, no, that wasn't you. Mel, that was my niece. Yeah, yeah. Right. That was, yeah, y'all wasn't here. That's right. Uh, I apologize, Mel. That wasn't. That was, my other niece was here. Oh, that's good. Oh, that's good. Oh, that's good. What do you ask for? He asked for Close, not with, not not knowledge though. Oh, I'm, yeah, I gave you the answer. He asked, he asked for wisdom, right? He asked for wisdom and something else. Yeah. Understanding, right? And then uh, gave him riches. And then he gave him riches instead, right? And also on top of it, right? So the Most High God told him because you didn't ask for riches, right? And to prolong your life. Or the lives of your enemies. Or the lives of your enemies. He said, well, 
since you asked for wisdom, I'm going to give you the wisdom now. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to make you give you an understanding heart. But I'm also going to give you, you know what I'm saying, the riches and everything you didn't ask for, too. So that set Solomon up. So he was wise going into it. So you have to you have to kind of put yourself, you have to picture it, right? You have a nation that the other nations respect. And the reason why they respect him because your daddy was that guy. You know what I'm saying? You're like, your dad used to lay these boys down if they got out of line. It was no problems, right? So everybody knew they were looking like, don't mess with the Hebrews. You know what I'm saying? There's some bad boys over there, right? Solomon then takes over, and he has wisdom. He already got the respect from what his daddy did. So then when you put those two together and you can guide people with wisdom and they respect you, oh, well, the whole, the whole world going to lay down for you, right? So that's what Solomon had. So he had people working for him, not in an unfair way. He ain't enslaving nobody. He, he, you know what I'm saying? He actually paying people quite well. He don't, have them, he don't have them working all the time. You know what I'm saying? He gave them some decent hours, right? Them boys had like, what, two, three months off or something like that? Yeah, three months on and three months off. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? So like they work well back because he's wise. He knew how to set it up to where... We can keep this effective, right? We can make we can make sure this thing works out for everybody. So he had it. He made a deal with Hiram. Hiram way up in Tyre. So think of Tyre. That's way up north, right? Hiram way up north, and this is a is a is a body of water that that you know what I'm saying that's that that borders their land, Israel and Tyre. So what Hiram did, he's like, man, I'm gonna send you some laws. They cut a deal. I'm gonna send you some laws for sure. Instead of having people walk down the laws, Hiram put them on the uh, water. Like boats, and he just shipped them down, you know, they're down south through the water. They pick them up. So it's the type of stuff that they coming up with on the fly, just moving. He getting everything together to build the temple. You remember David? He told him, "Look, this the pattern. This the temple. This is what I want you to build." Right? Where did David get the pattern from? Hiram. The spirit of God. He got it from the spirit, right? So the spirit gave David the pattern. He hand over the pattern, and then it's go time. Right? It's time to get it done. It's time to start working. And so that's where we're about to pick up now. We're about to pick up where the temple is being built. Right? At first, he's gathering all the material for the temple. He ain't even got the temple yet. He's gathering the temple. You know, or gathering the material for the temple. And now we're about to see how, how you know, it starts to get orchestrated. He starts putting all this stuff together. All right? Let's, uh, uh, where are we at? First Kings chapter, let's, let's do Second Chronicles. Let's do Second Chronicles chapter 3. This is 2 Chronicles chapter 3. It's 2 Chronicles chapter 3. We're going to pick it up at verse 1. And Solomon began to build the house of Yahuwah at Jerusalem in Mount Moriah, right? So he began to, to build the house at Jerusalem, right, in Mount Moriah. Let's see if y'all remember where Mount Moriah came from. Keep going. Where the Lord appeared unto David his father in the place that David had prepared in the threshing floor of Ornan the Jebusite. Y'all remember that? Y'all remember the threshing floor that David went to? Yeah, after the plague. So don't y'all remember when David numbered the people? What happened? The plague broke out. Y'all remember when he tried to number the people? Y'all remember when he tried to number the people? Okay, so he tried to number the people, and then Satan came after him, and the Most High God came after him. Y'all remember still? Okay, then after that, the true. Most High God gave him, he put a plague on the people, he prayed to God, the Most High God gave him options. Three options. Oh, now y'all remember. Okay. What happened after that? I just remember when he like, What did he choose? He chose the three days of the people. He chose the three days of the people being sick, right? Then, after the people started getting struck down, it was his fault. he felt like it was on him. That's what that's me saying that. But that's, you know what I'm saying? We look at the context, we felt, he felt like it was on him. Then what? Well, actually, he said that. Yeah, he, he said, said uh, yeah, he did. He said, these are just sheep. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, he actually said that. So, so then what? Y'all ain't even gonna help me out loud. Y'all just gonna go sit there. Goodness gracious. I tell you, boys ain't worth a darn. You know what I'm talking about? Goodness gracious. What you got? What else happened? It's all on you, man. You know what I'm saying? You can't rely on these darn. You know what I'm saying? It's all on you. All I missed. I felt like it was going here. 
That's okay. Y'all remember that he, uh, you know what I'm saying, he made his prayer, and the most high, uh, the, the, the angel told him to go, uh, go do a sacrifice. So then he went, to, he went to the threshing floor of Ornan. And then the, the, the Ornan was like, look, look, you know what I'm saying, like, I'll provide this for you, don't even worry about it, I'll get, you know what I'm saying, I got this stuff. Something like that. Something like that. Basically, he's saying if he's going to make a sacrifice, it got to come out of his own hand. You know what I'm saying? It ain't coming out of nobody. I don't want to give a sacrifice to the Lord that costs me nothing. You yeah. Know what I'm saying? Right? Know, dog, I'm not doing this for free. So, that where that sacrifice was, that's the same place that his son is building the temple. Right? It's called a place called Mount Moriah. But Mount Moriah goes back even further than that. Right? It goes way back to Abraham. So you remember when we first started, Abraham went to go sacrifice his son. Right? That was, grab, um, grab Genesis chapter 22, verse 1. This is Genesis chapter 22, verse 1. It's important to understand. We read these books and we see all these names. We see all these places. And sometimes as you do it, you just kind of breathe that. And like, man, stuff don't mean nothing. But when you start, you're going to see this Mount Moriah going to come up a few times, not by name, but in terms of where it is, it's going to come up and you're going to see the connection. Right? Because this temple going to end up being torn down and another temple going to be uh, put up right in front of it. And then the Messiah is going to be put on the cross. And guess what? It's right by that temple. Right? But watch this. And it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham. Right. And he said unto him, Abraham. And he said, Behold, here am I. Mm -hmm. And he said, Take now your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love. And take him where? And get you into the land of Moriah. And offer him there for a burnt offering upon the mountains, which I will tell you of. Now, ain't that interesting? Right? Why is that interesting, right? You have Abraham. What does his name mean? Mm. What is it, like many... Many is father fathers. of nations, yeah. father of many. I was you know what I'm saying? I was say many fathers, <laughs> yeah. father of many. You know what I'm saying? That was the new Abraham, and that was, <laughs> that was it. But it, it, yeah, father of many is what it's saying, right? So, him being the father of many, he was taking his son to sacrifice him on Mount Moriah. The father was sacrificing the son on Mount Moriah, right. Then you got the temple being erected on Mount Moriah. Then fast forward, our Messiah, the son, was left as a sacrifice in front of the temple by the father. Right? These things all connect through the book, and that's how you understand God. That's how you know God. Right? You know God through, the, through what's called the similitude, through, through everything kind of connecting and tying together. Right, a lot of these people don't see that, so they have they don't know they don't know the consistency of God. So they make up whatever they want to say. If me as a Christian, I walk up as a Christian, I say, you know what, brother, don't you know that God loves everybody? Right, I can say that because there's nothing in me that's gonna be like, no, that's not consistent with what I know from God. It's not, you know, what I'm saying I don't see that consistency. For a Christian, there is none. It's like, nope, New Testament, new book, new rules, and it's done. For us, we can't be like that. We got to look at the book and be like, no, nah, same God the whole time. The man got a DNA. He laid it all through the book. Right? The whole thing got to line up and it all got to make sense. Can't contradict nowhere. These people think it contradicts and they give up. So they turn their brain off. They don't even start thinking about it no more. They just start making up their stuff. You know what they say? Too complicated. Every religion I join, someone tells me it's wrong or there's holes in it. So you know what? I have my personal relationship with God. No, 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 I'm not religious. You know what I am? I'm spiritual. And they just make a mess. In other words, they just make it up as they go, which is fine for them. You do whatever you want to do. But when it comes to the book, though, if you know what I'm saying, if we're going to tie it back to the book and we're going to worship the God that created the, 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 the heavens and the earth, if that's what we're doing, then we're going to do it by the book. You talk to me, we're doing it by the book. I ain't had no conversation with you. You know what I'm saying? It's like, oh. Uh, I don't trust the book. I was like, oh, okay. Well, you know what I'm saying? No, I, I ain't got no problem. Why am I wasting my time? You know what I'm saying? I don't mean to badger you, sir. I thought you believed in the book. I saw some people just uh, almost stop. I almost stopped. My way back from, you know what I'm saying, driving here. You know what I'm saying? They was on, uh, they was on Tropicana. 
it's probably on Tropicana, like by the school. It's like Tropicana and University. You know what I'm saying? Maybe that was Flamingo and University. It's Flamingo. Yeah, Flamingo and University. They standing out there, a bunch of Christians. You know what I'm saying? Standing out there, young Christians. They got the young Christians out there. They got signs. They're like, donate for missions. You know what I'm saying? They're like, and there's a white one turning red in the face. He out there praying, but he praying like, you know, you know, white folks pray and they get into it. Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, Jesus Christ. Then he just rocking them back and forth. So I'm sitting there like, oh, let me at these boys. You know what I'm saying? Like, I didn't want to get them. Cause like, they out there wasting time. They had this little, you know what I'm saying? One of our little young black sisters right there. She's sitting there and she's just looking around. You can tell she's uncomfortable, but it's like, I'm supposed to be here because I want to do the right thing, but she don't really know. You know what I'm saying? So she's just looking around. And I'm like, man, if you only knew, they stealing your stuff and making a mockery of it right in front of you. You know what I'm saying? It's like, we just have to teach. They don't, and I got sympathy for them too, but they don't know what they're doing. They don't know. Somebody didn't talk them to do that foolishness. We all just need somebody to come back and just be like, no, nah, this is how it's supposed to be. It's straightening us out. And at the very least, even if it don't cause us to go the straight path, you know what it do for us? I know what I'm doing. I get to make an info. I know I'm going to. When I do this, I know I'm going to hell. You know what I'm saying? There ain't no question about it. Listen, when I get out here and do what I want to do, I know I'm going to hell. And that's a, I'm choosing that. That's fine. You got to respect somebody that's not, like, okay, I know it's going to happen, and I'm choosing that consequence, and I'm going to deal with it when it gets there. That's different. We got a lot of people that's just doing ignorance, right? That we don't know what's happening. We don't know what the books say. We don't know what God thinks. We've been convinced of something that's not true, and we live. We don't try to figure it out. Matter of fact, we plug our ears, you know what I'm saying? We close our eyes, and we just keep walking because we don't want to know what's on the other side. We don't want to know how God feels about this stuff, right? That's what we want to stop. I'm a hater. You know what I'm saying? I want to hear, no, no, God, you want to send you hell. Okay, now do it. You know what I'm saying? If you know about it, cool. You cool if you know about it. I just don't know. I want to make sure you know, though. I don't want you to do nothing ignorant. Your butt going right to darn hell, you don't live right. That's the book. Right? The book ain't never called us to stand in front of no street with no darn poster board. Darn poster board darn said, donate for missions. What mission? Boy, what you talking about? <laughs> I don't know. What's wrong with these people for missions? <laughs> I don't know what they do. They all do. They all do some stuff. Missions like what they like go on like a preaching. They always go to Mexico. Oh, like why are you always trying to say the Mexicans? Like, like no, nobody else. Did. When was the last time you saw? When was the last time you heard of one of these Christians having a? No, they be having African missions. I ain't gonna. You know, I ain't gonna. Yeah, I ain't even gonna do that. I ain't gonna do that to them. They do be having. African <laughs> they be out there. They be out there making a mess of them Africans. But they are like Catholic anyway. They be, you know what I'm they be, they be with them Africans. Just for seven ninety nine, you can feel you can feed young Octu. You know what I'm saying, Stop. boy guy. You know what I'm saying. Look, if a white man look nice, skin beautiful, moisturized, you got ashy Octu standing there with a fly just crawling right across their eyeball. He ain't he ain't even blink either. You know what I'm saying? Fly. I'm like, why don't you give him some water right now? Why you gotta make it? Why you can put no lotion on before you put on it? I don't like that type of stuff. Okay, show I feel manipulated. You have lotion. I see it. But your skin is nice. You look good on this camera. You got makeup on. Whole thing. You look nice. You didn't do nothing for my man. So that means you trying to manipulate because you can do something for him right now. What? The, oh, we got real quick. <laughs> you know what we got? These people made me mad. This is um, this is uh, James chapter two, verse twelve. Give me James chapter 2, verse 12. Because these people make me mad when they do stuff. Because they do stuff and then they manipulate me. In the, you know what I'm saying? Now I feel bad that I ain't send some money. Uh, this white man who can pay for this commercial, he paid for his flight to get out there, he paid for food, room and darn board, the whole darn time. He paid for all this to pay for the makeup that's on his face, pay for the lights for the camera. Everything paid for by this white man. But I feel bad. Because he on TV where I too and I ain't sent no money. Why well, I gotta feel bad about that? You could have gave I too some darn food. <clears throat> you could have put some little, you know what I'm saying, little I too in his ashy kneecap. That's wrong to put somebody on TV like that. That's like these folks that be walking around here, you know what I'm saying, advertising, selfie, you know what I'm saying, feeding the homeless. Do 
Fee, no, 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 you know what I'm saying? Fee, no, here, here, take this, take this. Oh, what? What? Stay right there. Got the shot. Okay, Fee, the homie. Why are you really? doing that to people? Drake's God playing video. God playing. You know what I'm saying? You see it the whole time. Hey, oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Don't know nothing y'all want. Get that down now. Oh, God. God. Hand it now, stuff. God playing. That song type. The song good, though. I like the song. But you look at that video. Like, why are you doing that? Why are you doing that? Right? This is, uh, this is James. This is James chapter... Um, James chapter 2, I want to say it's verse 12 is what I'm looking for. Tell me if I'm, it might be 9. Mm. Is that what I want? No. 9? It ain't nowhere near 9 or 12. Somewhere in between there, right? It's somewhere on here. I'll find it. You know, I'm looking for it. I want the beginning of it. Yeah, if you got what, you know, so you say he's hungry, don't send him away hungry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it should be early on. It should be like, you know what I'm saying? What nine say? Uh, but if you have respect to persons, you commit sin and are convinced. Yeah, no, so what, what 11 say? For he that said, do not commit adultery, also said, do not kill. Oh, uh, okay. No, I need, I need what, 13? 12? Uh, no. It's further down than that? No. Yeah. That doesn't need our mercy. What's 15? Uh, that's, that's yeah, 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 you want 15. Yeah, 15. Uh, this is uh, James. This is James chapter 2. This is verse 15. Watch the book set. Watch this. If a brother or sister be naked and destitute. Quick. This is how you, you know when people, listen, people confuse you. They give you all types of details. They try to make things confusing because they don't want to be accountable. That's how stuff works. If you go to a Christian church, a Muslim church or a Muslim, what they call it, mosque. If you go to any of these religions, right, and you go to them and you get to ask them questions, the first thing they're going to try to explain to you is, no, you don't understand. That's how it works, right? Because that's how, that's, that's where, if you can make a person feel like you understand more than they understand, you know what I'm saying? Then, then they may, they may trust you. In a lot of cases, that's how it should work, right? But in a lot of cases, these people be wrong, dead wrong. So the, what you have to do is you have to know enough of the book to hold people accountable. Not so that you can lord over them or be a master of them or anything like that. Just because you need to make sure that you're protected. Right? So the book tells us a few things about faith. And then when you look into the world of the people that seemingly are good people, people that are seemingly the right type of people that you want to be or you want to follow or you want to emulate. When you look at that, now you can judge it against what the book says. Not judge it against how you feel. Not judge it against what your mama used to tell you. Not judge it against what the pastors say. Judge it against what the book say. Now watch what this book saying. This is James chapter 2, about verse 15. If a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food. So now tell me, is Atu naked on that thing? Don't Atu only got his little wrap around his little thing? He's loin He got a little, listen, he got a little half a rag. Hanging from his, you know what I'm saying, hanging from his member. And then they got him on there. So Atu is naked and what? Destitute of daily food. Atu, the, they tell you Atu, Atu hasn't had a, a real meal in over 50 days. The fly that flew off and switched to the other eye, right? <laughs> Atu, Atu, with just a donation of $7.99, we can... We can we can correct the water that's in the in the river behind us and set up a filtration system. And not only Octu, but this entire village. You know what I'm saying? They say so he's destined to the food and he's naked on camera. Watch this. And one of you say unto them, Depart in peace, be you warmed and filled, notwithstanding, you give them not those things which they are needful to the body. So now profit. So now you on camera. Tell the Octu, listen, I hope these people donate something to you so you can be warmed and filled. Look, Octu, can I pray something? You know, when the camera shut up, you know they're going to say a darn prayer. Can I pray Can I pray with you, young Octu? Lord, feed Octu. Give him some food, water, and maybe some clothes. Man, fully clothed, got a suit on. His sleeve rolled up because it's hot out there. Right? Got a darn hat. He get done praying walk right away. Where's my prayer? You know what I'm saying? Get right back to it. Octu's still standing right there. 
And then I feel bad because you put the whole thing on camera. But the book said, what is that? Read it again. If a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food. If he's naked and destitute of daily food. And one of you say unto him, depart in peace, be warmed and filled. I, do, I, I just hope these people send something for you. Right? Be warmed and filled. Watch it. Notwithstanding, you don't give them those things which are needful to the body. What does it profit? It's unprofitable. It's profitable to him because he collected, you know what I'm saying, probably, you know what I'm saying, probably 50, 60% off of every dollar that come in. Right? Profitable, profitable for him, but it ain't profitable for, for, for the overall goal of what we're talking about. Watch this. Even so, faith, if it has not works, is dead being alone. That's done. So if a person is not willing to do what they talking about, if a person is trying to, if a person is praying for something that's in their power to do, that's fake. That's fake. What I prefer, I get it. We can't feed all the poor. We, we do need help. I get it. So what I prefer, put some lotion on our two legs. Give them a little fly repellent. You know what I'm talking about? You know what I'm saying? Get them on the camera. You know what I'm saying? Give them the same makeup that you got. Give them some Fenty, though. You know what I'm saying? Because I too black. You know what I'm Give them a little Fenty. You know what I'm saying? Hook him up with the right type of makeup. Right? Then after you do that, you give him a hamburger. You know what I'm saying? Give him a little, you know what I'm saying? A little drink. And then stand him up there like that. Looking nice. We got out to a haircut. Got him a drink. This, that, another. Out to. You doing all right now? Yeah. How it used to be? That thing was rough out here. I ain't going to lie to you. You know what I'm saying? I had, listen, before I met these white folks, I had water in weeks. These boys came and took care of me, though. That's a video. That, I could be like, now these boys doing some work. I sent you, you know what I'm saying? Let me send you, what I got? Man, we got like $2. You know what I'm saying? They said seven nine. dollars I sent you $2, though. You know what I'm saying? I sent you some money for I2 here. Because you showing me what you did for I2, not telling me what I got to do for I2. But they don't think like that because these people are crooked, right? These people, what they want to do is they want to manipulate your feelings. They want it to be a theatrical thing. It's a movie for them. It's a, it's a, and you know what they do with movies. They put a movie out there and they try to double up the profit on it. They spend $50 million on the movie. They want to make $100, $150 million. Same thing these people want to do. These people are crooked. Why well, you can't believe this stuff? Why, well, you know what I'm saying? You got no business standing out there, you know what I'm saying, trying to preach the gospel on darn Flamingo. What the average person on, average person on Flamingo ain't looking for no darn gospel? You know what I mean? People out here looking for the gospel and you ain't preaching it? Go find the ones that's looking for it. Go find the people that want to know God. Spend some time on them. Stop trying to stop trying to get glory. That's all that stuff is about. It's just somebody, you know what I'm saying? Ooh, guess how many, guess how many people I saved today? Guess how many converts I brought in today? That's all that stuff is about. You know what I'm saying? Oh, I stand in I street. Man, I ain't got no time for that stuff. I sit here, I spend my time with the people who are looking for God. You know what I'm saying? When was the last time you saw Yahushua? Running, chasing somebody down, like, please believe me. Please, I'm the Messiah. It's me. Please believe me. That man ain't get. He didn't listen. He wasn't stunned. Nobody he didn't believe. He was telling the people that did believe him that he didn't. They didn't believe. Like, nah, y'all don't believe. You know what I'm talking about? I don't believe because he's not looking. He's not looking for no glory, except for the glory that's due him, which is all of it. Right? Uh, let's go. Uh, let's go back. Who is we at? I don't even know how we got here. <laughs> Just. It's talk about Abraham is on Mount Moriah. Yeah, so we was on Mount Moriah. All the, all, the moral of the story, everything connects. You know the book well enough, you're going to see all of it connects. And it's important to recognize this stuff. We're going to keep doing this throughout the book because, you know, there's a few things that's about to connect to this temple that, that we're going to continuously see. You know what I'm saying? I want y'all to, you know what I'm saying, like kind of remember it. You know what I'm saying? Got to put this stuff in your memory. So this is, um, we're probably going back to what? Seven Chronicles. This second Chronicles chapter three, right? Verse what? Verse what? That's all we got. Verse two, didn't it? Verse. All right, come on, let's get a move on. It's second Chronicles chapter three, verse two. And he began to build in the second day of the second month in the fourth year of his reign. Mm -hmm. Now these are the things where Solomon was instructed for the building of the house of God. Uh -huh. The length by cubits after the first measure was sixty cubits, and the breadth twenty cubits. All right, so look. <clears throat> I don't know if the sound gonna work. You know what I'm saying? But look, we're gonna try to. <clears throat> yeah, Melody said our uh, mics sound like they covered by our shirt. They do? Yeah. All right, well, let me see here. It yeah. might be, uh, might be this. Yeah, 
Asher, Asher let you know if it sounds better after that. Um, right. Let's go here. So the first thing I want to do, I know this is in the way. Let me move it out the way here. You know what I'm saying? So the first thing I want to do is I want to show y'all what time it was earlier in the day. Um, in the previous day, it was uh, the first day of ABIA, which is the beginning of months for us, right? So as the, as the people celebrate on January 1st, as they celebrate uh, New Year's Day, you know what I'm saying? We celebrate the beginning of months, right? So this is this is technically going into the first Sabbath of the month right now, what we what we kind of looking at. Um, so if y'all want the people online, if y'all want this calendar, anybody here, I, got, I think I got some copies of the calendar. But if y'all want the calendar, you can go online to the tatayah.com. Um, and download the calendar if y'all want to keep these days with us. <clears throat> but let's go into the, uh, the let's go into the uh, give me a second. Mm. Let's go into the temple here. I just want to show y'all a video. Let me see here. So now this is the this is the temple. It's a video. Now you know what I'm saying. It's these people that's kind of imagining, but I think they did a decent job of what it might have looked like. So as we read it, you know what I'm saying. I just want y'all to kind of see. Well, actually, we don't even need to read it. Let's let's just kind of look at the temple. You know what I'm saying. So it's gonna show us the measurements here. You know what I'm saying. We are gonna see the measurements. Go oh, where the measurements are. There you go. So, you know what I'm saying. So you got you got the sixty cubits and the twenty cubits. You know what I'm saying. And thirty cubits up. You know what I'm saying. So that's what it kind of would look like. Then you got you got the kind of balcony, the porch. You know what I'm saying? They sit out there, still 20 cubits wide. It's going to tell you about the two pillars that's out there, too. You know what I'm saying? He gave specific names to them. So now look how he built the sides now. You know what I'm saying? So Solomon put the sides out there. Now on the outside, it just looked like a big box, right? But watch how intricate it is on the inside. You know what I'm saying? It got layers. So you got, you got planks that go over the layers. You know what I'm saying? And it's held up by the grooves that's in the wall you know what i'm saying so those grooves that's there you know what i'm saying you put the planks on top of it and it, it holds it up that way you ain't gotta you know what i'm saying you ain't gotta cut a, you know what i'm saying build different pieces of it together to fasten it to the wall or anything like that and that's the you know what i'm saying the ladders that kind of go up i think the books say stairs you know what i'm saying that's the inside so all that is covered with gold you know what i'm saying and then we carve uh, palm trees and cherubim. This is how they imagine that the cherubim look. They ain't none of my business how the cherubim look, and I ain't never seen them. But that's how they imagine. You know what I'm saying? Look, they look how they put the white face on. Them. You know what I'm saying? Put, <laughs> you know that John Stamos. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They put the they put the white face right on the front of that thing. You know what I'm I don't know what's wrong with these people. People are sickos. Right? I don't know what's wrong with. They so full of themselves. Mm. Thing is crazy. Like, <laughs> it's like, crazy. like like everybody everywhere you gotta look like you know what I'm saying? And everybody, everybody, you know, everybody gotta look like dog every part of the world bro jason the power ranger you know what i'm saying like it's crazy that's like crazy yeah you know what i'm saying so this is the court area and then this is this is the the the, the entry to the uh the the holy the most holiest place so now you know what i'm saying we got like this it's almost like a curtain but it's gold you know what i'm saying it's like a curtain so you kind of fold it, you know what I'm saying? You can slide and fold it, you know what I'm saying? That's for the inside and uh and the outdoor door. And then uh let me see, what else we got? This is all the all the you know what I'm saying, the carvings that we put in there. This is the only place when they, when we built our, our tabernacle in here, the only time that we could carve images, right? Because these came directly from God. God is the one who told us to carve these images. All right, so now we got our candlesticks, we got our table, you know what I'm saying? We got our, our, our uh, incense table, incense, showbread, you know what I'm saying? And this the outdoors. So these are the pillars. Now, one pillar is named uh, Jakin, Jakin, and the other pillar is named Boaz. Y'all remember Boaz? Mm -hmm. Yes, the other pillar is named Boaz. <clears throat> All right, so that's the top. That's what the roof would have looked something like. And this is the... Uh, this is the uh, the uh, the what? This is this is where the water is. You know what I'm saying? Where we, you know, what I'm saying? everybody was basin. Yeah, the basin. You know what I'm saying? The water basin. So we had we had twelve 
oxen at the bottom or, or calves at the bottom. You know what I'm saying? That represented our 12 tribes. So that carried the three on each side. Tell her I said, be quiet. Tell the kid downstairs to be quiet too. All right, then um, let me see here. Okay, now these are the other baths that you got. You have a whole bunch of priests and you have a whole bunch of Levi. So this is this is the other place where they can uh they can kind of you know wet their hands and wash themselves. Notice how stuff is on wheels now. You remember before we had to carry them with the staves. You know what I'm saying? You got stuff on <laughs> wheels now. You know what I'm saying? Cause we no longer we not. You know what I'm saying? We not portable. Not you know what I'm saying? We not portable like that. And now we got a lot more priests. So the stuff that can be on wheels, it can just be on wheels. You roll it in, put it in the shed if we need to. You know what I'm saying? It's all good. So this is somewhat how, how stuff would have been positioned. And then right here, you got the big old altar. So that's what it, all that is constantly burning. You know what I'm saying? Like it's somebody's job to keep that thing burning at all times. <laughs> yeah, these people make a mess out of themselves. Right, so it's somebody's job to keep that thing burning at all times. <clears throat> and uh, as long as it's burning, you know what I'm saying, then everything is good. We'll, uh, we'll make our sacrifices. Excuse me. There we go. We'll make our sacrifices, and then we can, uh, we can uh, you know, burn, burn our sacrifices on there, get rid of the ashes. Pretty much the same rules apply that we read way back in Leviticus. Right. Right, so it's a uh, it's it's uh, Red, yeah. it's important for us to know that and understand, kind of visualize what our temple looked like, and what TJ, our people give put it a together, chicken. what our people put together. This is uh, this is jump over to we left left off three. That would took us what three, four, five. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Give me um, give me Second Chronicles six. I feel like I want to go to Kings. TJ, you give us some fries too. Appreciate it, bro. You know, looking out for the allergic kids. Well, we go to First Kings eight. Right. This is after he finished. It's First Kings chapter eight. Give me verse one. Hmm. <laughs> you know these boys ain't got no sense, man. Then Solomon assembled the elders of Israel and all the heads of the tribes. The chief of the fathers and the children of the children of Israel unto King Solomon in Jerusalem, mm -hmm. that they might bring up the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord out of the city of David, which is in Zion. That's right. And all the men of Israel assembled themselves unto King Solomon at the feast in the month Ephraim. Ethanim. Ethanim, right? So this is uh it's gonna tell you actually. Which is the seventh month. Right. So this is the seventh month. So if we look at uh, up here at our calendar, let's go ahead and take a quick look. You know what I'm saying? If we look if we look up here on our calendar here. Then we talking about the seventh month right here. So month one, Abid, Zip is month two. Savan is work, month two, uh, three. Then you got the fourth month, the fifth month. You got Elul, which is the sixth month. Ethanim, with the, which is the second, seventh month. Um, so he's talking about this. Is, it was, it was uh, finished in Ethanim. And y'all remember when it started? He told us when it was started too, when we when we first started reading. It started in the month of Ziph. We didn't read Chronicles, but if we read uh I'm sorry, we did read no, yeah, we where did we start off? Chronicles? Kings. We started off in, I think we started off with Chronicles. We started off in Chronicles. Yeah, so I think it, it should have told us uh in the month of Ziph. So <clears throat> this is where we started building the temple, somewhere around here, day two. And then we didn't finish until uh, the month of Ethanim. I don't know if it gives us a day. What day? 
in the feast of the the month Ethanim, which is the seventh month. No. Okay. Keep going. And all the elders of Israel came, and the priests took up the ark, and they brought up the ark of the Lord and the tabernacle of the congregation and all the holy vessels that were in the tabernacle, mm -hmm. even those did the priests and the Levites bring up. Mm -hmm. And King Solomon and all the congregation of Israel that were assembled unto him were with him before the ark, sacrificing sheep and oxen that could not be told nor numbered for multitude. Mm -hmm. So they're doing a whole bunch of sacrifices. Just a grip of them things, right? Keep going. And the priests brought in the Ark of the Covenant un of Yahuwah unto his place, into the oracle of the house, to the most holy place, even under the wings of the cherubims. Mm -hmm. For the cherubim spread forth their two wings over the place of the Ark, and the cherubims covered the Ark and the staves thereof above. And they drew out the staves that the end of the staves were seen out in the holy place before the oracle. Mm -hmm. And they were not seen without, and there they are unto this day. There was nothing in the ark except the two tables of stone which Moses put there at Horeb when Yahuwah made a covenant with the children of Israel when they came out of the land of Egypt. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass when the priests were come out of the holy place that the cloud filled the house of Yahuwah so that the priests could not stand to minister because of the cloud for the glory of Yahuwah had filled the house of Yahuwah. Then spoke Solomon. The Lord said that he would dwell in the thick darkness. Mm hmm. I have surely built you a house to dwell in, in settled place, a settled place for you to abide in forever. Mm -hmm. And the king turned his face about and blessed all the congregation of Israel and all the congregation of Israel stood. And he said, blessed be Yahuwah, God of Israel, which spake with, the, with his mouth unto David, my father, and, as, and has with his hand fulfilled it, saying, since the day that I brought forth my people Israel out of Egypt, I chose no city out of all the tribes of Israel to build a house mm -hmm. that my name might be therein. But I chose David to be over my people Israel. And it was in the heart of David, my father, to build the house of the name of Yahuwah, God of Israel. Mm -hmm. And Yahuwah said unto David, my father, whereas it was in your heart to build a house unto my name, you did well that it was in your heart. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, you shall not build the house, but your son shall come forth out of your loins. He shall build a house unto my name. Mm -hmm. And Yahuwah has performed his word that he spake, and I am risen up in the room of David my father and sit on the throne of Israel, as Yahuwah promised, and have built a house for the name of Yahuwah God of Israel. Mm -hmm. And I have set there a place for the ark, wherein is the covenant of Yahuwah which he, which he made with our fathers when he brought them out of the land of Egypt. And Solomon stood before the altar of Yahuwah in the presence of all the congregation of Israel and spread forth his hands toward heaven. And he said, look, 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 this was what Solomon did. He went out before all the people of Israel. And then the book said he spread forth his hands towards heaven. Right. So he went like this. You look at him. You know what I'm saying? It's, you'll see in another place to tell you that he kneeled down. So he really on his knees. But he spread forth his hands like that. That's why when we pray. Remember, I told y'all last week, well, for y'all that was here, I told y'all last week that we were going to talk about praying this week, right? So when we pray, y'all know how we, we pray. We pray with our hands up like this, right? Because that's that's what Solomon, he wasn't like this necessarily, but he had his hands spread, spread out like that, you know what I'm saying, with the, kind of his palms up, right? So that's how we want to pray, right? You want to kind of pray, you know what I'm saying, with your hands up or like this, you know what I'm saying? Keep going, watch this. And he said, you who are God of Israel, there is no God like you in heaven above or in earth beneath who keeps the covenant and mercy with your servants that walk before you with all their heart, mm -hmm. who has kept with your servant David, my father, that you promised him, that you speak also with your mouth and has fulfilled it with your hand as mm -hmm. it is this day. Therefore now, you who are God of Israel, keep your servant David, my father, that you promised him, mm -hmm. saying, there shall not fail you a man in my sight to sit on the throne of Israel. So that your children take heed to their way and walk before me as you walk before me. All right and now, oh God. So now pay attention to how he began his prayer. First thing he did when he began his prayer is he said, I know who I'm talking to. I'm speaking to Yahuwah. Go back to the beginning of the prayer. Watch this. First thing he do is he identified the most high God by his name. Right? Watch this. And Solomon stood before the altar. 22. It's verse 22. Watch this. And he stood before the, before the altar of the Lord in the presence of all the congregation of Israel and spread forth his hands toward heaven. And he said, Lord God of Israel, there so is he no said, God like you. Yahuwah, God of Israel, there is no God like you. In heaven so, above or in earth beneath, 
who keeps the covenant and mercy with his servants that walk before you with all their heart. Right. So immediately after identifying his name, then he gives him glory. He exalts him. He praises him. Right. Ain't nobody like you, God. You know what I'm saying? I don't care if I look in heaven or in the earth beneath. I ain't never going to find nobody like you. You keep your cut. You know what I'm saying? He just letting them, he, you know what I'm saying? He building them up. He letting them know that I know how valuable you are. Right? Watch this. Who has kept with thy servant, thy servant David, my father, that you promised him. Mm -hmm. You spake also with your mouth and has fulfilled it with your hand as it is this day. Mm -hmm. Therefore now, Lord God of Israel, keep with your servant, my father, that you have promised him, saying, there shall not fail you a man in your sight to sit on the throne of Israel. So now the next thing that, that in, in the oftentimes that we see in prayers of men of God, right? The next thing that you see, they identify. After they identify, they give glory. The next thing that you generally see after that is they start quoting books, right? They start reminding God. So I look at it, identify, glorify, and then remind. You know what I'm saying? They start reminding God of what he said previously. So watch how, watch how he do that. Usually the glorifying go on for a long time and the reminding go on for a long time. And then the ask is at the very end. the last thing you do. If you make your ass, this is what I want from you. That part, super short. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You'd be like, yo, you know what I'm saying? Give me a new car. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, you know like everything else is long, and then they give you the ass is super short. Right? Yeah. Watch this. Watch out. Watch out. He starts reminding God about the different things that he said. Therefore, God of Israel, keep with thy servant David, my father, that you have promised him, mm -hmm. saying, There shall not fail a man. In thy sight to sit on the throne of Israel, mm -hmm. so that thy children take heed to their way, that they walk before me as you have walked before me. Mm -hmm. And now, O God of Israel, let your word, I pray thee, be verified, which you spake unto your servant David, my father. Mm -hmm. But will God indeed dwell on earth? Mm -hmm. Behold, the heaven and the heavens of heaven cannot contain you. Y'all remember that's the house what, that I have built. That's what God said to David, right? You remember when David was like, "I want to build your house." You know what I'm saying? Nathan was like, yeah, go for it. Then Nathan walked away. Most of God started talking to Nathan. was like, no, nah, go back and tell him he ain't going to build me a house. I'm going to build him a house. Right? And one of the things that Nathan said to him is, do I need a house? I'm in the heaven of heavens. What house is going to contain me? Right? So now you can tell David relayed that to Solomon. Solomon remembers it and he believes it. He didn't hear God say these things. Solomon believed it. He believed it enough when he praying to him, he's reminding him, right? I already know, God, that you don't need no help. I know the heavens and heavens can't contain you. So surely this help can't contain you. He remind them of his own words. I let them know. I get it. And I believe what I heard from you. Right? Watch this. Yet have you respect unto the prayer of thy servant and unto his supplication, O Lord my God, to hearken unto the cry into the prayer which your servant prays before you today, mm -hmm. that your eyes may be open toward this house night and day, even mm -hmm. toward the place which you have said, my name shall be there. Right, still reminding them of what he said, right? Keep going. That you may hearken unto the prayer which your servant shall make towards this place. Mm -hmm. And hearken thou to the supplication of thy servant and unto thy people Israel when they shall pray towards this place. And hear in heaven thy dwelling place, and when you hear, forgive. Mm -hmm. If any man trespass against his neighbor, and an oath be laid upon him to cause him to swear, and that oath come before your altar in this house, then hear in heaven and do and judge your servants, condemning the wicked to bring his way upon his head, right. and justifying the righteous to give him according to his righteousness. Mm -hmm. When your people Israel be smitten down before the enemy. No, he said, when we be smitten down before the enemy. In other words, when we go to war and these boys whoop us out, he was like, watch what he said. Because they have sinned against you mm -hmm. and shall turn again to you mm -hmm. and confess your name and pray and make supplication unto you in this house. He said, look, if these boys whoop us out and we turn around and we and we confess and we say, look, Lord, we messed up. We know we messed up. Right. He said, and they confess. This is what he asked for. And make supplication unto you in this house. Then hear in heaven and forgive the sin of your people, Israel, and bring them again into the land which you gave unto their fathers. Now, yeah, get away from that court for me. Over there by your mom. When heaven is shut up and there is no rain because they have sinned against you, uh -huh. if they pray towards this place and confess your name and turn from their sin, when you afflict them, then hear in heaven and forgive the sin of your servants and of your people Israel that you teach them the good way where they should walk and give rain upon your land 
which you have given to your people for an inheritance, right? So Solomon's looking like, look, when the rain stops and the people start praying, like, yo, we know we messed up. They pray towards this temple. Yeah, like, oh, no, man, we know he messed He said, man, just hear him out. All I'm asking, he's making his ass now, right? He's making a whole lot of ads just saying, listen, when the people do that, because he built the temple, he dedicated the temple. Now he's saying, look, now that this temple is here, when the people get themselves into this situation and they confess and they pray and they turn towards this place, make sure you hear them, please. And when the people get into this situation and they hear and they play and they confess, make sure you hear them, please. Right. So he's just listening out different scenarios of things that he would expect might happen. And then he's saying, look, allow the people to pray to you and you hear them if they if they face this temple, if they got the faith that, you know, what I'm saying that this temple is instilling them. Watch this. If there be in the land famine, if there be pestilence, blasting, mildew, locust, or if there be a caterpillar, if their enemy besiege them in the land of their cities, Whatsoever plague, whatsoever sickness there be, what prayer and supplication so ever be made by any man or by all your people Israel, which shall know every man the plague of his own heart, mm -hmm. and spread forth his hand towards this house, then hear in heaven your dwelling place and forgive and do and give to every man according to his ways whose heart you know. Mm -hmm. For thou, even thou, only know the hearts of all the children of men. That's right. That they may fear you all the days that they may that they live in the land which you give unto their fathers. Mm -hmm. Moreover, concerning a stranger that is not of thy people Israel, look, comes out for a far, from a far country for your name's sake. He said, look, concerning the stranger, this is the Gentile, right? This is the person that's not a Hebrew, not an Israelite, right? They came from a far land, but why'd they come? For your name's sake? They came for the, for Yahuwah. They came for our God, right? So he said they come from a far, la a far land for your name's sake, what happened? For they shall hear of thy great name and thy strong hand and of thy stretched out arm. Mm -hmm. When he shall come and pray towards this house, mm -hmm. hear thou in heaven thy dwelling place and do according to all that the stranger calls to thee for, mm -hmm. that all people of the earth may know your name to fear you. As do your people Israel. Mm -hmm. And they may know that this house which I have built is called by your name. Mm -hmm. If your people go out into battle against their enemy, whatsoever you shall whatsoever you shall send them, mm -hmm. and shall pray unto Yahuwah toward the city which they which you have chosen, mm -hmm. and toward the house that I have built for your name, mm -hmm. then hear in heaven their prayer and their supplication and maintain their cause. Watch this. If they sin against you, for there is no man that sins not. Well, he said, if they sin against you, if your people sin against you. And then you got it because there's nobody that don't sin. That's what he said, right? He, there's nobody that don't sin. Watch this. And you be angry with them. And you get mad at them, God. And deliver them to the enemy. And you end up delivering them to their enemy. Watch this. So that they carry them away captive unto the land of the enemy far or near. They said, and then after that, they get carried away captive to the land of their enemy, whether it be far or or whether it be near, he said. Watch what he said about this prayer. Yet, if they bethink themselves in the land where they were carried captive. And he said, captive, listen, if them boys do it, bethink me. Like, uh, have an epiphany. Like, uh, they come to their senses. <laughs> if they come, listen, if they forgot who they were. I mean, legit. If, he's, talking about, he's talking about Israelites, right? He said, if it come a time that they sin against you. Because, God, you know everybody's sin, right? If they sin against you and you get angry with them and you cause these Gentiles to take them out of their land and put them into the Gentile land, whether it's close or whether it's far away, right? He said, man, listen, if they bethink themselves, bethink mean they come to their senses. So if the Israelites remember who they are, how many Israelites know who they are now? Don't no, none of these folks know who they are. Right? You got black people calling they say everything but an Israelite. Right? So if they bethink themselves, they say, oh man, I know who I am. Let's see what else happened. If they bethink themselves in the land where they were carried away captive and repent and make supplication unto you in the land. They repent the land and make supplication. When they say supplication, that's talking about prayer. So when they, they repent, they turn from sin, right? They stop sinning and they 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 say a prayer to the most high God in the land, but watch this. Of them in the land of them that carried them away captive, saying, We have sinned and have done perversely. We have committed wickedness. 
and so return unto you with all their heart and with all their soul in the land of their enemies, which mm -hmm. led them away captive, mm -hmm. and pray unto you toward their land. He said, which Look, gave unto their fathers. He said, Pray unto you toward what? Their land. That you what? That you gave unto their fathers. That means us praying towards our land. Zakai, I just need you to pay a little bit of attention. Boy, go sit down. Keep going. The city that you have chosen mm -hmm. and the house which I have built for your name, mm -hmm. then hear their prayer and their supplication in heaven, your dwelling place, and maintain their cause. Right? So that's why when we pray, we got our hands up. Right? We facing where? We face east because that's the direction of where our land is. Because we bethink ourselves. That's what all this is about. When we come here every week and we talk, it's to, it's to cause us to bethink ourselves, to come to our senses. It's to teach us who we are. So that way we look at it and be like, man, I know who I am. And when it's go time, when it's time to pray, I'm going to pray this way. Right? It's many things that people are superstitious about. Right? People get superstitious about all types of silly stuff like, ooh, cross your fingers. Right? Or don't split the pole. Or knock on wood. Right? Or don't step on a cricket. Don't step on a crack. Don't break a mirror. All these things are superstition. Right? Because if you do this, it'll give you bad luck. And if you do that, it'll give you bad luck. And if you do this, something bad going to happen. Oh, my palm is itching. That means I'm about to get some money. All these different things that we got that people are superstitious about. Right? No, none of this stuff come from nothing. You can't find. Go ahead. Try to dig it up. Right? It used to be a thing. My family, don't put the purse on the floor because that means you're going to be broke or something like that. Right? It's a superstition. Find out where it comes from. Look it up. Google it. Where it come from? What God said that? Nobody. It's just something that people make up and we carry on in tradition and superstition. We have something that comes from our God. We have something that's valid, that's that's been validated through history, through miracles, through testimony. Every witness you can think of is in our book, right? We have that, and that's where our superstition has to come from. We got to be superstitious and say, if I'm going to pray, I'm going to pray to where the land was because Solomon made a prayer and asked God for that. That's our superstition. That's super. another word for superstition for us would be faith, right? Keep going. Watch this. And forgive thy people that have sinned against thee and all their transgressions where they have transgressed against thee. And mm -hmm. give them compassion before them who carry them captive that they may have compassion on them. Right. For they be thy people and thine inheritance which you brought forth out of Egypt from the midst of the furnace of iron. Look, it took me a long time to understand the humility that comes with being captive. Right. A lot of times our people, what we kind of look at is like, man, we don't need these people. We'll do it on our own. I don't even want them to give us reparation. We'll do it on our own. You know what I'm saying? We can build our own business. We can build our own. The, and they ignorant Mike, of history. Uh, Mike, uh, what's your name, boy? Go tell them to stop. All right. Oh. They don't. They don't. Uh, <laughs> they don't. They don't know. You know what I'm saying? They don't know our history, first of all. Because if they knew our history, they'd know it's been many times in our history that our people have successfully built some stuff on their own. And these white folk came in mess they stuff up yeah, for that reason right or they change the rules on us for that reason right because it's, it's a it's an intentional sabotage so it's not about us doing it on our own we in captivity for a reason right but it's one thing that you have to learn in captivity we often want to rebel against the people who have us captive right forget Biden forget Donald Trump I ain't voting for no president these people lay on they brought us here as slaves this that another and it's like all right cool but when you look at the book, the attitude is different, isn't it? Like Daniel. How, what was his relationship with the king? He was like his advisor. Daniel used to say good things about the king. Like, oh, king live forever. Imagine that now. Imagine a thoroughbred, one of these Hebrew Israelites, and they, you know what I'm saying, when they wear their dresses and their darn hats. You know what I'm saying? They put it on there, they got the tassels on. Why you got to call them dresses? Uh, you know, I don't like them, boy. You know what I'm, saying? <laughs> I'm just being mean to it. You know, I don't like them, boy. You know what I'm saying? But they got the boy, they got their, uh, their garments on. You know what I'm saying? They out there and they street preacher. The white man is the devil. You know what I'm saying? That, that, imagine that. He walk up to Biden. Like, man, Biden live forever. You know what I'm saying? Biden live forever. What they gonna say about that boy? Sell out. That boy is sell out. He gets to stand next to Biden. But listen, that's what Daniel did. And that's to Nebuchadnezzar. Right? 
That's how this stuff works. If you look at what he's saying is, he's saying, listen, if they pray to you in these conditions under captivity, after they be, think they fail, man, and they ask that, these people that they captive by have some compassion for them, man, let these people have a little bit of compassion on them. Give them a little bit of mercy. His, his prayer wasn't, let them rise up and kill all the Gentiles. That's how these people are talking now. <laughs> that's how these people are talking now. Right now, that's how they're talking. That wasn't his prayer. His prayer was, man, give them boys a break. You know what I'm saying? Give them, just break them off a little bit. Just give them a little bit of relief. Because Solomon being why he, he already knew if we end up in that position, it's because of what? He's on us. Because we sinned. Why the most high God going to have you? You know what I'm saying? Conquer his punishment to you. That don't make no sense. Most high God just like, you know what I'm saying? Solomon just asked him, most high God, why don't you just, you know what I'm saying, give him a little break. You know what I'm saying? Give him a little relief. You know what I'm saying? Take it easy on him for a little bit. Them boys start praying like that. Just take it easy on him. You know what I'm saying? Keep going. Watch this. That thine eyes may be open unto the supplication of thy servant and to the supplication of thy people Israel to hearken unto them all that they call for you, uh, all that they call for unto you. Mm -hmm. For you did separate them from among all the people of the earth to be your inheritance, as you speak, as you spake by the hand of Moses, your servant, when you brought our fathers out of Egypt, O Lord God. All right, so he's still quoting book to him, right? Watch this. And it was so that when Solomon had made an end of praying all this prayer and supplication unto the Lord, he arose from before the altar of the Lord, from kneeling on his knees. Uh huh. So you see, I, you see, I, it didn't tell us here. If we would have read it in Chronicles, Chronicles told us that he would, you know, they would have told us he got down on his knees. It didn't tell us here, but it tells us at the end he got up off of his knees, so it let us know. You know what I'm saying? So he was on his knees praying. All right? Keep going. Watch this. And he stood and blessed all the congregation of Israel with a loud voice, saying, Blessed be Yahuwah that has given rest unto his people Israel according to all that he promised. There has not failed one word of all his good promise, which he promised by the hand of Moses, his servant. Mm -hmm. Yahuwah, our God, be with us as he was with our fathers. Let him not leave us nor forsake us, that he may incline our hearts unto him to walk in all his ways and to keep his commandments and his statutes and his judgments, which he commanded our fathers. Mm -hmm. And let these my words, wherewith I have made supplication before the Lord, be near unto the Lord our God day and night. That he maintained the cause of his servant and the cause of his people Israel at all times, as the matter shall require. That all the people of the earth may know that Yahuwah is God and that there is none else. Mm -hmm. Let your heart, therefore, be perfect with Yahuwah our God to walk in his statutes, to keep his commandments as it is this day. And the king and all Israel with him offered sacrifice before the Lord. And Solomon offered a sacrifice of peace offerings, which he offered unto the Lord, two and twenty thousand oxen. And 120,000 sheep. So mm -hmm. the king and all the children of Israel dedicated the house of Yahuwah. The same day did the king hollow the middle of the court that was before the house of the Lord. For there he offered burnt offerings and meat offerings. And the fat of the peace offerings. Because he because the brazen altar that was before the Lord was too little to receive the burnt offerings and meat offerings. And the fat of the peace offerings. And at that time Solomon held a feast and all Israel with him. A great congregation from the entering in of Hamath. Unto the river Egypt before the Lord our God, seven days and seven days, even fourteen days. On the eighth day, he sent the people away and blessed, and they blessed the king and went to their tents joyful and glad of heart for all the goodness that the Lord had done for David his servant and for Israel his people. Mm -hmm. That's the end of eight. Yeah. Let's go ahead and see if we can get through nine. And it came to pass when Solomon had finished the building of the house of the Lord, the king's house, and all Solomon's desire, which he was pleased to do, mm -hmm. that Yahuwah appeared to Solomon the second time. And right. he had appeared unto him at Gibeon. So it was all said and done. Solomon had the feast. They kept the feast to, uh, in gathering. Right. On the eighth day, he sent the people because the eighth day of the Sabbath for us. He sent the people away. After the eighth day, he said, yeah, y'all go ahead and do your thing. Right. Everybody been out there partying for a whole, for a whole week. You know what I'm saying? Well, really for, for two weeks. So he sent them away on the eighth day of the feast. And then, after that, the Most High God appeared to him again. So you remember the Most High God appeared to him at Gibeon. That's where he made the prayer. It was like, you know what I'm saying? I just want wisdom and understanding to lead your people. You know what I'm saying? So now the Most High God appeared to him again. Watch this. And the Lord said unto him, I have heard your prayer and your look, supplication. Look what he said. I have heard your prayer and your supplication. So in other words, all that stuff we just read, 
the most high God appeared to Solomon and was like, Yeah, I heard you. Watch this. That you have made before me. Uh-huh. I have hollowed this house which you have built to put my name there forever. He said, I set apart this house that you built to put my name there forever. Watch this. And my eyes and my heart shall be there perpetually. He said, I'm always going to be watching. My eyes and my heart. He said, I'm always going to be watching and caring about this place or thinking about this place. Watch this. And if you walk, if you will walk before me as David, your father, walked mm -hmm. in the integrity of heart. In, in uprightness to do according to all that I have commanded you mm -hmm. and will keep my statutes and my judgments. Mm -hmm. Then I will establish the throne of your kingdom upon Israel forever as I promised to David your father, mm -hmm. saying there shall not fail you a man upon the throne of Israel. Mm -hmm. But if you shall at all turn from following me, you or your children, and will not keep my commandments and my statutes which I have set before you, mm -hmm. but go and serve other gods and worship them, then I will cut off Israel out of the land which I have given them, and this house, which I have hollowed for my name, I will cast it out of my sight. And Israel shall be a proverb and a byword among all people. Mm -hmm. And at this house, which is high, every one that passes by it shall be astonished and shall, and shall hiss. And they shall say, Why have Yahuwah done this unto this land and to this house? And they shall answer, Because they forsook Yahuwah their God, who brought forth their fathers out of the land of Egypt, and have taken hold upon other gods, and have worshipped them, and served them. Therefore has Yahuwah brought upon them all this evil. And it came to pass at the end of 20 years when Solomon had built the two houses, the house of Yahuwah and the king's house. Mm -hmm. Now Hiram the king of Tyre had furnished Solomon with cedar trees and fir trees and with gold according to all his desire. Mm -hmm. that, that then King Solomon gave Hiram 20 cities in the land of Galilee. Mm -hmm. In the land of what? Galilee. So Hiram had 20 cities in the land of Galilee. That's where everybody thought our Messiah was from. All right. Watch this. Keep going. And Hiram came out from Tyre to see the cities which Solomon had given him. And they pleased him not. And he said, what cities are these which you have given me, my brother? Mm -hmm. And he called them the land of Kabul unto this day. And Hiram sent to the king six score talents of gold. Sixty talents. Wait, sorry. What's that? What's that? Six score? That's going to be 120. Uh, 120. 120 talents of gold. And this is the reason of the levy which King Solomon raised for to build the house of Yahuwah and his own house at in Milo, in the wall of Jerusalem, in Hazor, in the ghetto, in Giza. For Pharaoh, king of Egypt, had gone up and taken Giza and burnt it with fire and slain the Canaanites that dwelt in the city and given it for a present unto his daughter, Solomon's wife. Mm -hmm. And Solomon, lived, Solomon married the, the, the Egyptian woman, the Egyptian, you know what I'm saying, the daughter of the king of, of, uh, of Egypt. And Solomon built Giza. And Beth Horon, the nether, and Baalath, and, Tad, and Tadmor, in the wilderness, and the land, mm -hmm. and all the cities of, of store that Solomon had, and cities for his chariots, and cities for his horsemen, that which Solomon desired to build in Jerusalem, mm -hmm. and in Lebanon, and in all the land of his dominion. And all the people uh, that were left of the Amorites, Hittites, Perizzites, Hivites, and Jebusites, which were not of the children of Israel, the children that were left after them in the land, whom the children of Israel also were not able to utterly destroy. Upon those did Solomon levy a tribute and bond service until this day. But of the children of Israel did Solomon make no bondmen, but they were men of war, and his servants, and his princes, and his captains, and rulers, and his chariots, and his horsemen. These were the chief of the officials, officers that were over Solomon's work. Mm -hmm. 550 which bear rule over the people that brought in the work. But Pharaoh's daughter came up out of the city of David unto her house, which Solomon had built for her. Watch this. Then did he build Melo. Right? So Pharaoh's daughter, that's the woman that he married, the Egyptian, she was living in the city of David. But then she left the city of David. Watch this. It, it, that's at the point that he built a place called Melo. You know what I'm saying? It's like a, like a, like a, like a fortified city or like a base. And three times in a year did Solomon offer burnt offerings and peace offerings upon the altar which he built unto Yahuwah, and he burnt incense upon the altar that was before Yahuwah, so he finished the house. Mm -hmm. And King Solomon made a navy of ships in Izion Geber, which is beside Elah, on the shore of the Red Sea in the land of Eden. So now he put boats in the water that can watch over the people as well. So if somebody tried to attack by water, Solomon prepared for that too, right? So he just getting everything, he, he getting the whole kingdom together. Right, remember he started this only four years into his kingdom. So in, in, into his reign, about four years into his reign, that's when he started building all this stuff. Right, keep going. 
And Hiram sent in the navy his servants, shipmen that had knowledge of the sea, with the servants of Solomon. Mm -hmm. And they came to Ophir and fed from thence gold, 420 talents, and brought it to the king Solomon. Right? So then they end up finding a whole bunch of gold. So they brought that gold back to King Solomon. Watch this. That's the end of it? Mm -hmm. Okay, well, now we, we'll, we'll pick because 10, 10 is going to take us to another place. I mean, uh, yeah, 10 yeah. is going to take us to another place. So we'll, we'll end right here then. Um, but we'll, we'll end up talking about the gold, right? We're going to see how gold, you know what I'm saying, under Solomon, because he found that gold. So he, he set up a navy. So now he in the water. And then King Hiram also got some people that know about the water a little bit. So he paired them up with the navy that King Solomon put up. After that, they stumbled on some gold. They brought a whole bunch of gold back to Israel. So that's what's going to make them just rich above. You know, this is the this is the, the promise that the Most High God gave them. Saying, I'm going to make you rich too. You know what I'm saying? This is where it's about to play out. So far right now, it ain't like he, you know what I'm saying, exceeded in riches too crazy yet. This is where it's about to go crazy. You know what I'm saying? Like this, like you thought he had balling now. That boy, that boy about to go crazy with this, you know what I'm saying, with all this gold that they came up on. Yeah, silver was like, oh, hell yeah. You know what I'm saying? That thing like nothing. You know what I'm saying? You got some silver? That's all right. You know what I'm saying? Why don't you, uh, you know what I'm saying? I usually use silver to kind of pave my driveway. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's what I use silver for. That thing was nothing. You know what I'm saying? Any questions? Nope. All right. Well, let's pray out. Oh, you said you had a question? Oh, let's pray out.